Welcome to Tin Can Program. This is the second video in our Career Mode Guide series. Today we will be flying Tin Can 3 on our first flight to orbit. We have several tasks to complete before launch. Begin by researching the four required techs, General Rocketry, Stability, Advanced Rocketry, and General Construction. Next, accept the Orbit Kerbin contract. Before leaving Mission Control, look for another contract, any contract, and claim the advance payment. We really only need the advance. There's no need to worry about completing this contract right now. If you want to actually complete your side contract, there is almost always a contract for the Mark 16 parachute, similar to the one you see here. However, you may accept any contract you wish and complete or ignore it at your discretion. By the time the contract expires, you will be able to afford the penalty. We just need a little extra funding to finish some building upgrades. Right-click the buildings to open the upgrade dialog. We need to upgrade the launch pad and the vehicle assembly building before we can launch Tin Can 3. Tin Can 3 exceeds the limits on part count and vehicle size imposed by the Level 1 launch pad and VAB. Now that everything is ready, we can put Tin Can 3 on the launch pad. For this mission, we are still basically just going up and then back down. Unlike last time, when we literally flew straight up, this time we will go up and over the horizon until we reach orbit. While we are in orbit, we will return to the Space Center and visit Mission Control for an additional contract and extra reward. This mission carries no science instruments, but we will get a new crew report from Kerbin's upper atmosphere. This can be done on the way up or on the way back down. After liftoff, we just fly straight up for about a minute. While we ascend, watch the available Delta V in Stage 2 increase. This is our orbit stage, which uses an engine that's most efficient in space and nearly useless in an atmosphere. Even though it only carries a tiny amount of fuel, the orbiter can change our velocity by almost one kilometer per second, but only once we get into space. After you jettison the outer boosters, Watch your altitude and be ready to begin pitch over at 25 kilometers. The rocket has limited steering power while the solid boosters are running. This air resistance will cause your heading to drift away from the 90 degree centerline. Correct this with roll rather than yaw. The angle will bring you back down toward the correct heading as you pitch. We will jettison the last booster during pitch over and you will immediately notice that the steering is more responsive. Be careful not to oversteer. Pitch all the way down to the horizon and level off, making any corrections you need to so that you are back on a 90 degree heading. Keep it steady on this course until the upper stage burns out. Be sure to cut the throttle before you jettison the empty upper stage, so we don't waste any fuel. Open the maneuver tab on your HUD in the lower left and consult your apoapsis reading, or AP. This shows the altitude at the top of your current trajectory. Wait until you approach your app altitude, then realign the orbit module toward prograde and hit full throttle. This thrust will raise the opposite side of our trajectory and change it from a ballistic arc into an elliptical orbit. When your periapsis altitude, or PE, the lowest point of your trajectory, reaches 70 kilometers, you have achieved orbit. Before we fly the spacecraft home, let's return to the Space Center and look at contracts. Our previous contract was completed as soon as we achieved orbit, and now there is another one available with an extra reward for returning home. Accept this contract. It's free money. Then use the tracking station to resume flying Tin Can 3. 
you may initiate re-entry from any point in your orbit. When you are ready to go home, simply align toward retrograde and increase the throttle. When your PE altitude is about 25 kilometers, cut the throttle. Jettison the orbit stage once your burn is complete. Don't worry about any remaining fuel. If you want to orbit Kerbin a few times before you begin re-entry, that's fine. But keep an eye on your remaining electric charge, and be sure to come home before it's completely drained. Don't forget to collect a crew report in the upper atmosphere if you didn't do it on the way up. When you enter the atmosphere, you can safely time warp until you see the reticle begin to drift away from the nav point. Disable time warp before correcting your alignment. You will need to manually correct your descent trajectory during re-entry. Keep the reticle inside the retrograde nav point as best you can. As we approach PE, drag from the atmosphere will slow down our spacecraft, capture it, and bring it home. Later, when your pilots have leveled up, you will be able to activate the automatic retrograde hold and time warp through this entire phase of flight. This ability is unlocked at level 1 after a pilot's first trip to orbit, so the pilot you are currently using will gain this ability after this flight is complete, and you will be able to use it on your next mission. Stage the parachute at about 2 kilometers, then recover the spacecraft after it touches down. Congratulations on completing your first orbital flight. The next contract is for Moon Flyby, but the specific goals for this one are randomized. Orbit Kerbin was the last of our starting contracts, which are the only non-random contracts in the game. This means that the rest of your path forward is unpredictable. For now, the important thing to note is whether your flyby contract requires you to return to Kerbin or not. After flyby, we want to orbit Moon next, where we will collect hundreds of science with EVA reports. You can see a little preview of that right now. If you get a flyby contract without the return to Kerbin or gather science goals, you can get a new contract as soon as you arrive at Moon. This is usually a contract to orbit Moon, which you can do right away without a second launch. This saves time, and it feels very efficient and cool to do. On the other hand, a second launch is no big deal. The only difference is the time saved. Contract goals are created randomly when the contract is created, so if you want, and if you plan ahead, you can reload an old save until you get the contract goals you want. This isn't necessary, it's just possible. Of course, you might not get the orbit contract next. After flyby, you may be asked to perform orbital rendezvous. After you've orbited Moon, you may be asked to perform a rendezvous there, too. There's a video for that, which you can see a preview of right now. This video covers orbital rendezvous at Kerman to show the basic technique, and then moves on to cover rendezvous at Moon as well, with a few extra steps to show how to apply the basic technique in orbit of any celestial body. Now that you have your contract and you know what to expect, proceed to the Moon Mission video. This will show you how to fly Tin Can 4 to Moon, and how to proceed from there. Good luck! That's it for this video. Thanks for flying with Tin Can Program. We are required by internet law to instruct you to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Tin Can Program is expanding to Twitch for Kerbal Space Program 2. You can find more information about that in the video description below. Thanks for watching.